Hello friends and welcome to Electric Island. This presentation will benefit the Phyllis Newman Women's Health Initiative, a program of the Actors Fund. We started to work on this musical during the beginning of the shutdown. I wrote a concept, an idea, and it had a lot of words and I needed help and it needed music. So I reached out to my friend, Stephen Jamail, and luckily he said yes to the task. I'm so thankful to our producer, Danny Davis, for making this event possible. I also want to give a special shout out to our director, Katie Huffman. Thank you for seeing this musical through a new lens. This story is set in Manhattan and the time is now. The show is based on the real lives of Broadway performers. Not the stars above the marquee, but the people working and going from show to show. I just want to say thank you to the women who have given so much of their time and talent to this piece. I am excited to introduce you to Electric Island. Welcome to Electric Island with your favorite host, Morgan Taylor. On this week's episode, we'll meet some of the most incredible women of Broadway. We're celebrating the performers and their mega fans. The people who never stopped hoping and waiting for the return of New York City's brightest lights. Broadway. Welcome to the island.
to Electric Island. I'm your host, Morgan Taylor. We've been waiting a long time for the return of Broadway, and we are finally starting to see hope for its future. Today, we're celebrating the Broadway mega fans from all over the world who never stopped supporting and believing. We chose one mega fan winner, and she's here with us today. Daisy Reynolds! Dreams do come true on this electric island. <laughs> Daisy's wish was to meet her favorite Broadway performers, and her list was incredible. So we invited all of them here today. They are here. We can't wait to hear their stories and to chat with them. They are superheroes on stage and off. This is what live theater on a live streaming show is all about. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome this electric panel. Vanessa Wild. Delva Jones. Julia Katz. And this college throwback, my friend, Phoebe Cooper. Phoebe, it's so good to see you. It's been a minute. Morgan, I can't believe it. Life has really flown by. Look at what you've done with yours. It's impressive. Okay, I don't mean to interrupt, but can I go first? Oh, yeah. yes, okay. <laughs> good. Um, I'm Vanessa Wild, and I have to say I'm a little nervous. Uh, I'm glad to see some familiar faces. Delva, you are looking good, lady. It's been ages since that bus and truck of sweet charity. I loved you as a man, but wow, I am living for you as you. <sighs> Delva knows me pretty well. I like to just get things done and over with, if you know what I mean. Um, I've been in this business for 25 years, and let's just say it's been... Let's go to an audition. Come on, I'll tell you all about it. I'm a six foot blonde plus ambition, but with a voice that lacks tradition. And it led to only chorus calls, you see. But Adam, is there a perfect tune for me? I had the looks, but not the key. my stems my face. How's that for range? 
And maybe they wrote a song. They wrote a song just for me. They sure did. And Vanessa, to be born like you, ooh, now that would be something. Thank you, Vanessa. Hi, Daisy. Congratulations on your new mega fan title. You know everything there is to know about all of us. Now, who are you? Vanessa? <laughs> are you talking to me? Yes, I'm talking to you. Okay, um, oh my god. I, I am not prepared to be in this room with all of you right now. I, okay, but whew, I'm just getting it together. Okay, um, well, I, I, want, I wanted to come here and meet all of you and, and listen to you and learn from the Broadway elite. You, and here I am, and I just, I didn't think I'd be as scared as I am. But, okay, um, you, you want to know more about me? Yes! Heck yeah! Spill it. Well? When most kids my age were starting to walk, I was trying to dance. By three, I knew what a belt was, and no, not the thing that holds up your pants. But when I asked Santa for lessons, my mom just shook her head. She looked at her alien kid, rolled her eyes, and said, Why wish for things that you can't touch? Dreams get you high, but they cost too much, but her words didn't bother me, no, not in the least, I could take a crumb and make him the feast, I was ready for the lights to dim, and the curtain to rise, tap shoes on my little feet, and stardust in my eyes, I was ready for my number, so everyone could see. Mama wasn't ready, no, not ready for me. One spring break when most of my friends left to ski and tan. I snuck out on the overnight bus to New York with a plan. I'd spend every penny I had saved just to see a show. And maybe prove my mother wrong A chance for me to know Do my dreams cost too much? Is it worth being a little poor? But when I looked up And I saw that first marquee It was all of that All of that and more I was ready for the lights to dim the curtain to rise a plain bill in my hand And a galaxy in my eyes I was ready to watch my heroes And wonder if they'd agree That this place was ready Ready for me I thought, my God, these are my people People who could be Flying on broomsticks and waving through Knock, knock, knocking Till someone lets me in I'm tired of waiting at the stage door Waiting for life to begin The lights will dim And the curtain will rise Catholic Dukas on my feet And a supernova in my eyes When the sun goes down The stars will shine Ready 
was not ready for you. But we all have a story. <laughs> yes, we certainly do. <laughs> Hello, world. I am Julia Katz. I just figured it was my turn, so. Now, Daisy, you have nothing to be afraid of. Look at you. You're here, and that's step one. <laughs> I'm just so impressed that your generation wants to know about our story. I always assumed that you were more interested in your own. The jury's still out on that. <laughs> Before I came to New York, I was a star in my hometown. Sound familiar? Yeah. <laughs> I played every role. And I was, if I may say so myself, pretty damn good. Well, I arrive on this electric island and I sank like a rock. What? <laughs> in my mind, I was, I was so versatile and, and, and funny and, and, and sweet. <laughs> and I could sing. Well, let's just say it took a decade of work. Every free gig, backup gig, benefit gig, unpaid gig. Uh, did I mention free? <laughs> Ball change. Come to find out, I'm not the typical Broadway ingenue. <laughs> what? The girl who could play every part and doesn't get cast in anything. Somebody told me I needed to change and I believed him. Body image. I allowed people to put me in a box and I accepted the fact that I wasn't enough. I was literally starving myself to become someone I wasn't. Once upon a time it was all stick thin. I was starving, tired of. Watching Electric Island. This is like a Broadway takeover and it is about time. Ladies, you're branding a new road back to Broadway. I barely even made it through my intro and smack in the face you just went all in. <laughs> this is why I love Broadway. <laughs> Delva, 
I'm dying to hear about your career. Tell us what it means to you to be a woman of Broadway, how you changed paths and crossed over. Ah, uh, Morgan, one doesn't cross over. I didn't die. Oh, um. I was a girl from the very first moment of life. I just shared a body with a man. I had to get out. When I was a very young child, I used to make up my face using anything I could find, dirt, milk, icing. I could see the true me and it was real. Mm, the problem was no one else could. I, I could make seven gowns out of a tablecloth by the time I was six, okay? I never felt like I was in the right body, ever. I love to sing and dance and perform, and I'm thankful for that because that led me to my first pack, the gay community. I was accepted for being feminine, and I was grateful to find solace for a while. I love drag shows, oh, I still do, but they just never felt right for me. It's hard to understand, I'm sure. But my body didn't match the lady in my soul. The world didn't have words like trans, transgender, cisgender, genderqueer, gender fluid. It sounds like a lot, but it's not. When I finally figured out, I was not a gay man who was feminine. I was a woman. I found my life. And I lost so many people in the process. I rolled in like a raging storm. Angry at the world, but it kept me warm. Had an appetite that I could contain behind the bars of skin. But who's to blame? Five a.m. We're next to nothing. High on God knows what. One last drag from whatever's in my pocket. I learned to stumble with a strut. Ooh, I was glamorous. Baby, so glamorous. Knew the things to say. The price I paid to stay. I got to Manhattan, I was 17, and thought it was New York City's lucky day. I was so bold and fearless. This one time I auditioned for a show, I had to sing a country ballad. It had a sad ending. Um, I smiled through the whole thing, and the musical director said, you know this is a sad song. And I said, yes. And he said, then why are you smiling? I said, because I'm just so happy to be here. God, what I wouldn't give to feel like that again. Uh, no fear, no pleasing, no living up to the idea of me, just in it. I got that job. I got a lot of jobs. And then things slowly started to change. I started getting into the party scene and the chase of it all. Oh, I had a blast. Until I didn't. I had to get high to come back down to get high again, rinse, repeat. This one time I, I bought $200 worth of tissues. I thought it was cocaine. I knew better. I know what it feels like to sabotage a career. I had money for cabs, no more waiting on a train. Money for rent and for numbing the pain. From audition to rehearsal without a mistake. A little fairy dust to keep me awake. all of you were so perfect, I would escape from my own sad story and dive into yours. But I could be anyone. You became my reality and your shows gave me hope. And as 11, my mom left. 
My dad never wanted to talk about her. When I was 15, I started to raid my father's liquor cabinet. Peach schnapps. <laughs> I'll never drink that stuff again. But I liked the way that it made me feel. <laughs> I definitely did not think I would be talking about this today. talking about body image, family, tragedy, and change. Phoebe, you certainly changed my life. I never felt like I changed anyone's life. We had a lot of fun back at school. <laughs> Did we ever? <laughs> I, think, I think we memorized every word from Les Mis in one long all-nighter. We drove everyone crazy. Do you remember you saying two, four, six, so oh, one like a thousand times? I was a great Valjean to your Javert. Oh, oh. We used to laugh so much. Look what you've accomplished. You made the right move leaving the stage for the studio. Mm. Sometimes I wonder what being on Broadway would have felt like. Don't. Ladies, you just rocked my DNA. And Daisy, 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 I wasn't ready for you on any level today. I needed to meet you. Listen up. Don't wait on show business to live your life. Live it. I spent a lifetime of thinking about myself because that's what it took to succeed in this town. You didn't just get to take a leave of absence to have a baby. That's new. Having a child wasn't on my mind until it was. And by that point, the doctor says, you look great, but your eggs are dying. Ugh, that was a long walk home. So I did what every intelligent woman would do. I went to the fertility clinic, <laughs> signed the papers, started IVF, received donor sperm, and charged $17,000 to my visa card. My doctor said, don't worry, you're fit, you're healthy, you're young. <sighs> Not young enough. I found out I had three eggs. So I nurtured them, I loved them, I named them, I prayed for them, and then I mourned them. After approximately 30 years of a monthly cycle, a lifetime of building a career. That internal clock starts doing an ovary tap dance and just to throw it down with a chaser shot from God, the universe, mother nature. 
Who the hell knows? Menopause. So, I'm in the process of adopting a baby from Somalia. I waited too long. It wasn't my time. Yes, my future will always and only be mine. I couldn't let myself want you. Oh, my dreams came first. Now I've let the light in and my heart wants to burst. There's one other chance if given the grace. So I'm asking myself, is there a place for a mother like me? The one whose skin doesn't match a mother like me. The one they ask about their past, a mother like me. Who couldn't bear her own, a mother like me, for someone to call their own. It's worth the wait, it's worth the ride. This is worth the pain that I carried inside. You are the choice, and you are my story. You're the sweetest part of my mother's glory. I'm taking the chance, I'm making the space for my life to be blessed with a precious child's face. For a mother like me, the one whose skin doesn't match, a mother like me. going to be a great mom, Phoebe. Thank you. I don't think women talk enough about the sacrifices that we make for show business. I've never <laughs> told my own story on my own show before, but today marks a new day and we're all in this together. I'll honestly say that it took a lot for me to get here, a lot of sacrifice. I say welcome to Electric Island every morning, and I love this island. It's where dreams come true, and it's also where they get crushed. You know, once upon a time, I was a, a hometown girl, a good student. I, I went to University of Texas and fell in love with journalism, and Jared, I was happy. And then a harsh reality kicked in. You know. No one wants to help a woman coming up in the newsroom, especially if you're young, smart, uh, ambitious, attractive, and tied down, single, driven, and, and willing, <clears throat> very willing in more ways than you would ever care to admit. Phoebe told me to break all ties before I took my internship, and I didn't believe her at first, and it turns out she was right. 
She knew where I wanted to go. We had been down similar paths. There was no room for a relationship on that island. So I, I broke Jared's heart. And mine. That was it. No kiss goodbye. Too certain to breathe or cry. Didn't look back as I walked away. Cause if I did, I knew I'd stay. I had a plan and this was the time. Pavement to cross, glass mountains to climb. I thought busy was better than lonely. Kept me from stopping to ask if only could I have had love. Could I have said stay? I wanted it my way Should I have yelled stop Said forgive me I'm wrong I loved you enough for a lifetime And this is my song right before my eyes. Ladies, thank you so much for sharing your stories. Vanessa Wild, Delva Jones, Julia Katz, Phoebe Cooper, and Daisy Reynolds, our newbie. <laughs> Welcome to the family. It is a big family. We will continue to change minds, dream big, speak up, and remember that we are better together. Here we are, Electric Island. We are on our way. We are on our way. Light it up, Electric Island. Shine again for me. 
Thank you for joining us tonight for this benefit performance for the Phyllis Newman Women's Health Initiative. We are so excited about our new show. We can't wait to share with you the scandals, the twists, the surprises, and a whole lot of heart. You'll just have to stay tuned until we are ready to shine bright on this electric island. Good evening, everyone. I'm Danny Davis, one of tonight's proud producers then Actors Fund trustee and cancer survivor Phyllis Newman founded the Women's Health Initiative to create a place of safety and compassion for women in entertainment dealing with serious medical conditions and life-changing decisions. We are so proud that tonight we women and men of Broadway are here to celebrate and benefit this important initiative of the Actors Fund. We're so grateful for the Actors Fund for making this evening possible with us. Thank you so much for your generosity tonight on behalf of the Phyllis Newman Women's Health Initiative. And tonight would never have been possible without our gorgeous editor, Marty Thomas, who brought magic and spectacular vision to this evening's program. And Melanie Morgan, our incredible stage manager who just made it all hum, even as we were all remote. I hope this finds you all well. I hope that you, like I, are looking forward to being together again live in the theater. I also want to thank our incredible angels who helped us tonight. They are Jerry Mitchell, Al Tapper, Justin Bohan, Don Nolan, and Corey Greenberg, whose generous donations tonight made it possible for us to donate 100% of this evening's ticket sales and donations to the Phyllis Newman Women's Health Initiative. What a great community we have. I can't wait to be with all of you again. Please stay safe, please be well, and let's go ahead and celebrate the women and the men of Broadway. Yeah.